So hello all uh, guys, we have with us Izam and today the kind of transition story that he has specifically made, we'll try to understand about that. He's made a transition from 12th standard. He's just uh, cleared 12th standard and now he is working as an ML engineer role. Uh, we'll try to understand his entire transition story and how did he do that. So first of all, welcome Izam. Uh, how happy are you in this specific you, podcast? Yeah, I'm excited uh, a lot because uh, I've been seeing your video for so long. So it's really exciting for me. Yeah. Okay. So this this podcast is going to be really amazing, guys, because you will definitely be learn uh, a lot of things from Izam itself. Uh, so Izam, uh, just to start with, uh, let's talk about your brief background, um, your education background in short, and then how... Why did you just think, okay, data science is the thing that I really need to do? I'm probably currently, you're currently working over there. So let's talk about that, about your deep background and how did you probably get into this industry? Okay, so at my schooling, I would say in my 10th standard, I got a laptop, so I started exploring a lot. Uh, like at first it did select like movies and all. And later I get into web development, app development, and it's really exciting. And in that, I've seen ML and the data science role. And uh, as uh, just like others, I tried this also. So at that time, I feel a curiosity in that. It's like predicting the future. At that time, it was a magical for me. Like I literally remember that I once did a linear regression and I'm literally predicting with the current data. So I got a curiosity at that point. And after 10th, I started learning ML. So at first I watched a lot of videos from YouTube. At that time also, uh, like a lot of YouTubers just like you are putting a lot of effort into this YouTube to, uh, like before that, it's kind of hard to understand a lot uh, these things in ML. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. at that time, uh, it's like getting familiar with it. Uh, mm -hmm. Like uh, I started watching your videos and code basics is there and I watched some other playlists and mm -hmm. I've learned the basic ML and I moved to deep learning but at that time I found a difficulty to understand the thing in deep learning but later on I started exploring more and within this two years I started looking into deep learning and in these days most things that I'm working on is in LLM and generative AI things. Mm -hmm. So along the way, uh, I've developed multiple projects, like it's a mini project and the main project in op and I've contributed into open source. And after 12, I spent almost one year to learn these things on my own. And I tried to have some internships as well, but it turned out to be a guidance from some mm -hmm. companies and all. And along with that, I would say uh, like for around two months, I've been started applying into uh, jobs and uh, I got some luckily I got some referrals after uh, asking uh, some of my friends in LinkedIn because mm -hmm. early on when I started my career one of the two things that I mainly focused was my LinkedIn profile as well as GitHub so when it comes to the interviews uh, at first I faced a lot of rejection because I'm a, I'm a fresher and I don't have a degree and even in plus two also I like uh, my Plus one and plus two is in commerce. It's not computer mm -hmm. science. So mm -hmm. I faced a lot of re rejections just because of that. But I kept applying and at a point I started getting interviews. And I felt like I can able to crack that. Like uh, some so of them how, I got uh, rejected you, in how, also. Like, how were you able to convince them? Because you're still 12th standard, you have 12th standard pass. Uh, since yeah. you have just done online, uh, like you had that kind of projects that you have done. How? What was the major thing that you told them right uh, because initially let's say there if you don't have a degree at that point of time I still feel that okay companies won't hesitate to probably reject the resume they'll just reject the resume so how did you convince yeah, them definitely. with respect to that so most of the thing that I one of the projects that I've been working on like it's an open source uh, library that I created it's mm -hmm. basically for evaluating rack model it's an mm -hmm. open source uh, library and I'm the mm -hmm. core developer of it so most mm -hmm. of the interviews that I got, most uh, uh, like the technical person or the person who are working in a company, I just text him like I've been doing uh, like learning ML for this while. I, I didn't mention about degree and I'll just add some GitHub also. And I'll mention that 
uh, I've been working on this uh, particular project. The project name was Rag Rank. Mm -hmm. So at first, I got the initial uh, like interviews just because of that, and they checked the tool uh, mm -hmm. that I. I'm not the only one who built that. It's a collaborative project. I'm mm -hmm. one of the core developers in that. So, uh, and they have checked my contribution into that particular thing. They have checked the, like, the GitHub and all. And mm. uh, they have somehow convinced that. But it's not an easy part. I applied more than 1,000. I guess I lost mm -hmm. the count. So, mm -hmm. uh, it's not an easy. Don't think of it like a, like a plus two student applied to a couple of uh, companies and got it. Uh, most mm. of the uh, like people who don't care about my resume, like mm. most of them are caring about my GitHub. And in interviews also, they're confirming that whether it's done by me or not. Like, mm -hmm. they need to ensure that I'm not uh, following a particular tutorial to do that. It's mm -hmm. good. But in this case, I'm portraying this as a, like, I, like, we uh, identified a problem in RAG. Like, mm -hmm. in these days, uh, there is fine tuning and we can implement RAG as well. Like, mm -hmm. in order to uh, have the power of LLM in our AI application. So, mm. uh, like, in order to improve the system, we have to evaluate it. But mm. in the case of ML, uh, we have a lot of uh, metrics, precision, recall, a lot of that. We can derive equations mathematically. Mm. But in mm. the case of RAG, it's not possible. Mm. But still, there are a couple of evaluation. Is there ROG? Uh, those are blue score as there. But mm. in the case of a RAG in a production ready environment, it's not productive. Like, it's not mm. efficient. So mm. I've read a couple of research back back in the days, like rag rag assessment, GPT mm -hmm. score, and I've implemented it. So I would say these are the main things that kept the uh, eyes of uh, HR on me. Like mm. I got mm. the initial mm. interview just because of this. Okay, so more amount of the like your main backbone project was your entire open source project where you were a specific code developer, and you're able to convince them with respect to the kind of work that you yeah. have actually done. But definitely, you faced a lot of problems. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You had applied for more number of jobs. Amazing. Amazing, Izam. Uh, so, yeah. um, again, guys, this is an amazing thing. As as Izam said, right? Uh, he kept on working on his open source project. He kept on, he kept on uh, explaining things with respect to the kind of work that he has done. He kept on doing some amazing projects over there. So, Izam, uh, what yeah. kind of uh, guidance that you really want to give others also? Since uh, you have started your career in this early stage, now you're currently working there as an ML engineer. So what would you like to tell others uh, with respect to the preparation that they are specifically doing? Uh, because if I talk about your transition story, many people will not believe it. You know, I think you may also agree with this. Many of them will yeah. not believe it. So what do you think other people are lacking and uh, why they are not able to do that? Yeah, I mean, for the first of the thing, like after getting to this role, a lot of people are texting me, uh, like in LinkedIn and all. I posted in there. So people are thinking, like, after watching a couple of videos, you can enter into, like, literally, they're thinking after my schooling, I watched a couple of videos and I got mm -hmm. into the interview. It's not like that. Mm -hmm. In uh, If you are targeting a job, it's a long journey. Like, I, I took more than two year, year to get into the position where I'm in. Like we have mm. to be theoretically strong. We have to uh, understand all the mathematical thing behind each of the, and we have to understand the statistics uh, before, like most of the people that I've seen going directly into the LLMs mm. and all, and they're uh, like expecting a job after watching mm. some videos, don't doing any coding part. So mm. first of the uh, thing, it will take a lot of time and if your sole target is uh, a job, it might be hard for you. Like for me, at that time, there are a couple of options are in front of me. Like I can mm. solve problems on that. Uh, like I can do a lot of things. But in my case, I love open source and coding in Python in general. So mm. I focused more on that and I try to have a fun with it. So it's mm. a two year journey and it's, I'm not going to get a job uh, until and unless I have a specific skill set. Mm. So first thing, uh, it's a long journey and we have to start. And at first you can get started with any playlist videos. And along the way, you have to move into documentation. Like if a new mm. tool coming, uh, coming up, you, there is literally no tools is there. Mm. And uh, in data science specifically, 
each role have its own thing to, that we have to work in. If I'm targeting data analysis, it's a separate journey. Like mm. we have to have the fundamentals right in the ML, mm. but if I'm focusing on a specific thing, we have to work on it. Like for me, I didn't apply any single data engineering role, data analysis. I didn't mm. apply it because I don't Your think my SQL theory. Your target was completely different. Your target was yeah, completely different. Yeah, my target was different, and I love to do the. Is a is a just one question on top of that? Okay. Um, So uh, obviously the interview yeah. that you probably got was that after you approached people you know through linkedin and all right and uh, yeah, in the definitely. interview right they other than the open source project what all questions they specifically asked you since you are getting an ml engineer role did they ask you about ml ops yeah. so what all additional skill sets did they specifically ask you Okay so in the interview is one of the first thing was a mathematical part of it uh, like uh, i thought it's not the name but like if you are getting to the llm it's another world and we'll be excited like we can't mm. uh, we'll think that the mathematical part is not as interesting mm. but in mm. the interviews most of the interview they ask about statistics what are this thing uh, even though it's an ml engineer position and let you they ask uh, like in my current company it's more like a generative ai thing so mm. they ask what is agents lang how many mm. xp how much experience do you have in lang chain and all and mm. they are given some scenarios to me what mm. will be your approach whether mm. you will go with this or this uh, like in a real time situation and mm. there is a coding round also in that specific interview mm. uh, at first they have given some lead code level questions uh, mm. not that hard but in order to test them logists uh, mm. and after they get into the like basic uh, numpy pandas and also some lang chain those kind of things as well mm. so they are mm. checking the basics out of it and the most things are in the theoretical and real life scenario part mm. like mm. Uh, they can't check all of the things in the coding part it's only one or two hours but mm. they'll ask a lot of things related to the uh, theoretical part in the mm. Uh, mm. initial coding mm. round along with this project discussion okay perfect so that's yeah. that's amazing you know you also prepared in that in a way that was mostly asked in the kind of interviews and mostly most of the interview goes in this specific way itself uh is am yeah. uh uh see obviously uh, uh when you say okay after 12th you're getting a job and you're probably working and probably after a couple of years you may be experienced person like you'll be have a tremendous amount of experience since the learning experience of yours will be quite good and initially the thrust of learning will be more you know so yeah. uh what do you think yeah. uh, like what is your future plan going ahead you know probably in the upcoming 5 years what you really want to do again go back to studies and again come back or how it will be so in my school days uh, i'm not a person who is a package or i'm not a person less in studying I scored mm. really high in the schools, and I love academics. So mm. in this also, I'm planning to. But after twelfth, what I've uh, realized is, uh, like a degree is cost my four year, and I don't think it's worth for four year. If I'm like, and also mm. I'm from commerce, it's not getting. I, I could not getting to a tier one college for B Tech. I can only go for a BCA. so mm. uh, my future plans are uh, one of the thing i'll have a online degree mm. and mm. another thing is i wanna go open source a lot because i love to do things in open source so i'm planning more with this generative ai and open source thing mm. and on top of that i'm planning to stick on with my company like uh, it's really an amazing company and the culture was really good and mm. i have couple of seniors in there in order to guide me in that particular coming so uh for upcoming years uh, these are the three things that i would do one is uh, my academic things and in this current company along with this open source i'm planning to do a lot in the open source i because uh, it, it's not because of the hype that it have i love to do that rather than watching a bunch of like movies i would prefer to do things in, okay. like it gives me a joy So this really shows, guys, the power of open source uh, contribution. So definitely, you should also try to do. So Isam, uh, uh, obviously, a lot of um, people will get motivated from this particular podcast from your side. And uh, congratulations once again uh, for yeah. getting an ML engineer role. 
i will uh, uh, i will provide your link and uh, your open source project in the description of this particular video so if any people try to contact you please do not hesitate to help them out uh, so guys this was it from our side uh, yeah, i hope you yeah yeah, yeah yeah please go ahead go ahead isam Uh, like in that product also it's an mvp that i've created it's not a stable version so we okay. are working on that if you have found any issues no, no, just to, that is that is this. that is just like uh, to get the idea like uh, what is an open source contribution like how do you probably develop yeah, definitely. it how many people contribute yeah. in that and all so thank you yeah. isam for this amazing uh, podcast and again uh, you know many people as i said many people will definitely be getting boost, boosted out of this particular interview right so yes this was it for my side i hope you like this particular video uh, i and izam will see you all on the other side uh, if you have any question anything you can directly contact izam everything will be provided in the description of this particular video so thank you izam thank you everyone have a great day thank you